<clears throat> well, you know, listen, that, that's the option. I can always do that. I can, I can fight. I could beat one. I could beat one to fifteen straight after one of them. Every single one of them down there. So I can do that. But you know, there's, there, it's come the time now in my career that I want to see how good I am. Am I good enough for Golovkin? Can I beat him in my own head? You know, I've said things in the past, but like, I remember sitting here when I was at a pr press conference with. Um, the Eubanks that I said that he beat me and him on both nights and on that day I said that I wanted 18 months before I faced Golovkin. Now we're two years past, not that I want to get any more experience because I've been boxing since I've been five. You know, Alvin brought up, I need no, no more experience. It's just mature, I'm 27 now, in my prime, he's 34. If I can't beat Golovkin now, I'm, not, I'm never going to beat him, never. So I'll, I'll, and I want to be the first man to dethrone him. Did you think, um, you know, saw with um, um, Isaac Chalamba against uh, Soma Kovler recently that a trickier boxer against, you know, kind of a stalking puncher can create all the scenarios and obviously you would love to have box blocking. Yeah, listen, with me, I know my boxing's there, I know I can box. There's not, nobody can run away from me from boxing because I, I believe that I've got one of the best brains in the middleweight division, if not the best. But it's more the challenge. I love hearing when people say that you can't do it, you won't do it, and that just gives me the more incentive to do it. Um, you know, I just love the challenge about things, and you, if you, you, it's impossible to get a more bigger challenge than uh, Golovkin. So, see if I can rise to the occasion. If I don't, it's, you're very sharply going to get found out. If you, if you leave one stone on turn again, you will get sharply found out. So, it's a challenge. Everything's got to be perfect. And um, I, and my own heart in it, I believe I can beat him. I've seen many weaknesses in him, um, you know. But also, I've seen some good stuff in him. You know, I can't, I'm not taking anything away from him. But at the end of the day, he is only just a man. He's not. He's not. He's not invincible. You know, there's reasons why he didn't box Andre Ward. There's reasons why he didn't box. Um, there's reason why he didn't box. Sorry, Ward. There's reasons why he didn't box, move up to super middle and box certain other fighters. Because I think that Ward definitely could uh, exploit that weakness that I know is there, and maybe one or two others at that weight. But you know, he, like he keeps saying, he wants all of the belts. Give me my last belt. I got one here. If he wants to fight in December, I'm ready. And a um, a mandatory. Which I know Jacobs is. Do not, you know. I don't think that comes close to uh, unification. I think that overall unification, mandatory. Yeah. So he can do it if he wants to, and I'm willing to go to America and fight him here. And I think you know, we talk about there are weaknesses. There's weaknesses in all boxers. It's how you, whether you can exploit, whether you've got the brain and the wherewithal to exploit exploit the weaknesses. That's really what it's about. And I've always said, in my opinion, a good boxer will always be a big puncher. It's, if you look at history, it's always worked out that way. It's always worked out that way. But you've got to be an extremely good boxer to be a Golovkin or a Canelo. You know, and I think Bill is a, an extremely good boxer. Can I ask you just off Well, I've just seen, I've just heard, I've just read the Twitter out to you. Um, <coughs> I'm you sir, sick and tired of talking about Tyson Fury. We've had it all weekend, and I've got to tell you something. No one more than Bill, who's supposed to be fighting in the on a show in Manchester on the 29th, and us as a channel who put millions of pounds into this, into this, uh, can, you know, I mean, could be more disappointed in what's gone down here. It's a great shame, but you know, I think, I think I've had enough of Tyson Fury um, stuff over the weekend. To uh, you know, I certainly got no no interest in, in discussing it. I mean, I'm in the business of promoting. Boxers and broadcasting fights of, of fighters who want to fight, <coughs> and just get on with it. You know, it's just, it doesn't do anybody any favour. We can do without that today. Bill's got a press conference today. We know we all know how it works. That's going to be a big story today. Let's get a half kill what we're here for for Bill. So, you know, Tyson Fury didn't give a shit today. Excuse my French. That's the only way I can put it about where you know Bill today in his press conference by putting that out. You know, so what do we, you know, what do I, certainly what do I care? I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I've been one of his biggest 
um, supporters and he's obviously got himself in a bad place at the moment but he can't take the rest of us in a bad place what we want to do is talk about today Billy Joe Saunders and the show that will hopefully go ahead on the 22nd on Box Nation that's all I certainly am concerned with Well, Saul Ryder, did he face legal action from various quarters? Sorry? Does he face legal action from various all I want to talk about today is our press conference. I'm not, I'm not here. If we had a t Tyson Fury press conference, <coughs> Jeff, I'd be talking about it mate, today. I should, well, should ask, ask me that question tomorrow and I'll answer all the questions you want on Tyson Fury. Today, I'm talking about Billy Joe Saunders, a boxer who's on the cusp, provided he comes through to fight on the 22nd, of being involved in a, I think, in a historic fight involving a Brit and one of the, <coughs> one of the great fighters in modern time boxing, be it Golovkin or Canelo, he's there, he's there to, to do that, and that's all we're interested in. Fighters who fight. Listen, just, that's all I'd say, he's in mentally in a very bad place at the minute, but like I say, we're here for a press conference today. You know, the tragedy of Mike Tower was, mm. was last week, and um, the fact that supposedly he was having headaches and migraines and, and perhaps didn't report it in his medical. Um, is, it, is it a problem for boxers um, when you get to the stage where you've trained really hard for three months, you've got a fight, he had a British title eliminator, he has a, a partner and a child. Is it very difficult for the culture in boxing to change and fighters to come forward and you know, kind of be transparent about those things? Is it something that needs to change? Well, look, the, the way you've got to look at it is that you know, we can all get headaches, you know, but sometimes when I'm out of train, I'll sit down, I've got a headache for a, a day, and he's laid down, it's, it's, it's life. But, you know, there, there's other things when people drop weight, when, you know, if they drop weight fast, it, it can affect them. But, Sitting in saunas. And, and stuff like that, you know, it, it, it all do affect them. But it's one of them things that we can't just put a finger on and say, because of boxing, that is all because, you know, it's probably leading up to the fight. I don't really know much about it, but obviously it's, it's, it's a tragic loss. And uh, every death in boxing will put a, a cloud over it. But, you know, the sport will go on. I just, I meet me, me thoughts and, um, and everything goes out to his family. But it's just one of them things you can't put your finger on. And, you know, we have our brain scans, we have our medicals. Um, we get checked before at the weigh-ins. You know, and these ain't just anybody checking us. These are doctors. So, you know, if they can't spot it, but you've got to tell the doctor. Yeah. You know, it's well, like, you, does it make you want to come forward now? If you have a headache in the week of the fight, how difficult would it be for you well, to, to be, it's a very to be honest with you? Like I was saying, to be fair, Frank's always said, if you're not right, don't fight. And he's always said that. You know, he's always said that from day one. If you're not 100%, don't fight. And um, if I wasn't 100%, you know, I wouldn't. And if I knew that. I was suffering bad from from headaches. You know, boxing's a sport. I love it, but you know, I wouldn't put it before my life. Um, so it's one of them things. That if I did have a headache, I'd say or try the best way solution around it. But I wouldn't just go in and and thinking you could try and fight it off. And I think because it is dangerous, people do need to, to tell people if they have got sort of problems. Thank you. And those fights are a champion. Yeah, that fight's a championship weight. You hear all I mean, there's a lot of stories now circulating about various things and. You know, but, but fighters, that's what they want to do, they want to fight. You know, they're fighting men, that's how they earn their living, that's how they get paid, and that's why you need that information. You know, over on McKenzie a couple of weeks ago, his career's over. He found he was, had a dizzy spell in the gym, and thankfully his managers and trainers, uh, Tony and Martin Bowers, took him for a couple of to have a few tests, and uh, it, they dis detected very, very late that there was this heart problem. So he pulled out the fight. But you know what he wanted to do? He wanted to fight. So let me go in there for a round and see how I'll go I'll get on for a round and I'll see how it is. That's, he's a fighting man. Now, he was getting quite a good payday in respect to the purses he's earned in the past. And you're thinking about his future, and you think that the health comes before the, the money. And, uh, and uh, the management, Tony and Martin, they made their decision. And it was, a, especially you look back what happened on Saturday, it was, a, it was an absolutely right decision.